Hi guys, I just thought I'd let you see the setup uh, that I shall be using for um, the rest of uh, this video. Uh, so uh, this is the, uh, the little cell that I showed you in the previous video and uh, I've got the, uh, uh, the ZI8 camera with the microscope lens on the front of it there. I'm actually hanging the camera upside down um, but I'll flip the image in Photoshop so when you see the images from this camera they will be uh, orientated correctly. So uh, let's just get in a bit closer there so you see the little lens there and uh, I've got about a 10 millimeter gap between the end of the objective lens and uh, the uh, the gap between the two electrodes and uh, so that that's what we're going to be looking at and what I've found is uh, looking through the plastic container uh, the plastics uh, far too scratched so I'm going to put a, a little um, glass window in there I guess I could use uh, some sort of glass container but I can't find um, uh, a small glass container that's convenient so uh, I've got a microscope slide here that I'm going to cut and uh, I'll uh, drill a, a little window or cut a window in that plastic and it just means that I'm looking through something. I'll show you um, the image uh, on the camera. Okay so uh, that's the uh, obviously the camera and uh, uh, that's set up on that, that's the little frame I made uh, years ago uh, just a little adjustable table yeah, very useful um, obviously I've got another blessed tripod here and there so that's what uh, the camera is looking at just check my focal length I really struggle with focal length um, okay so uh, let me see uh, as I move the framework in and out of focus so I'm moving the, the frame that's carrying the sample there I can zoom in on that camera oops and just knock it all flying you can get some idea of the difficulties there so that's the gap between those uh, two electrodes just change the light in there a little bit those uh, little marks there are scratches on the plastic and I think they might just get in the way of uh, what it is I'm actually setting out to see there um, anyway that's just a, a brief uh, um, idea of the setup that I've got um, this is one of my little magnetic uh, lenses um, okay I've cut a little window in that uh, box and now I'm going to cut uh, the slide um, if you, you could probably cut that with a, a conventional uh, glass cutter it's a little tungsten wheel but uh, I told you about the bra wire application uh, that I made equipment for uh, this is another application that I uh, got involved with and I designed and built equipment for and uh, that's an industrial diamond and that's been brazed into the end of this little rod um, uh, it's been abused a bit that one but it's uh, still a very good cutting tool uh, for glass and you, you don't need the sort of pressure uh, that's uh, associated with um, uh, a tungsten wheel like that that's a conventional uh, good old-fashioned wheel uh, while I'm at it uh, I'm easily distracted as, as I said um, that's a polycrystalline diamond that's polycrystallized diamond on the top and that's been brazed onto this uh, tungsten carbide and um, that's a very special process an induction heating process and this is one of the cutting tips 
that you would find on a geological drill bit so people that are drilling for oil have these things um, covering it, it looks like a pineapple with these things just uh, all you see is, is are those tips and uh, that, that's used for uh, say oil exploration and all, all sorts of things and then there's uh, some larger ones there yeah. but uh, anyway as I say I digress uh, all of these uh, applications are now carried out by uh, Ambrel. I'll put a link uh, in, in the video. And uh, if you want the most interesting job in the world, then uh, the applications engineer at uh, Ambrel uh, has probably got it because um, what happens, you get people who are at the forefront of their technology and then they uh, they come to you and ask for help and uh, had a lot of fun as uh, as an application engineer uh, more fun than the managing director that's that's for sure and i'll bust that that's been cocky but uh, i can retrieve it in fact no i won't i'll start again I'm, i made a mess of that because i'm i'm not really concentrating on what i'm doing I've got some proper pliers for this job. Oh, that's not the cleanest uh, <laughs> job I've ever done, but uh, there you go. So I'll glue that into place and that'll be a little window. I recoated the uh, electrodes or the ends of the electrodes there as um, I just wasn't happy with the amount of uh, contamination that I'd got in the powder. I don't think it's any problem. So I could have um, uh, varnished those. Um, I did uh, try some clear lacquer on them, but I just thought this plastic coating would be better. And the reason I've done that is I only want the bubbles to be appearing um, between the two faces of the electrodes. Okay, this isn't the proper test yet, but uh, just getting set up. Um, this is the positive side. And that's the positive side. And I must remember to turn the image upside down. I'm recording this at uh, 60 frames a second. So we'll just zoom in. And uh, I haven't made any measurements. I'm just going to put the... Um, uh, I've got the high voltage tester on and I'm just going to give it a little shot. That's not very interesting. fairly large gap. Um, now I'm not seeing there what I saw previously. Oh look at those bubbles. That's, oh, sorry. You can certainly see the bubble change in shape can't you?
it's a fairly large gap I've got there. I say this isn't the proper test that I set out to do, um, but uh, I, I, was, I was just playing to see what it looked like. I think I might just close that gap up and have a look. Um, I know one or two of you have uh, set out to buy microscopes to uh, copy this, but isn't that interesting? And the clicking, of course, is me pressing the button on the uh, on the mega. But I'm just going to make that gap smaller. Well, I've closed the gap up, and um, it's very fiddly. Uh, it really will pay me to invest some more time in coming up with uh, an adjustment mechanism. Uh, incidentally, the diameter of those wires is 1.6 millimeters, so I haven't worked out what that gap is, but that's uh, I don't know, it might be around half a millimeter. Anyway, I haven't switched it on yet. I'll do it again now. I'm just surprised, but that looks very different to what I saw previously. I've got exactly the same voltage, you know, 500 volts. I'm getting the same meter readings. So, what's different? So this is not the test I was setting out to do, um, but uh, just um, uh, I just can't resist pressing the button. Uh, so this is 500 volts or there about DC with about half a volt of AC ripple. At a couple of hundred kilohertz. Um, okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Um, uh, I need to do other things. You can see there's something interesting happening there because you can see that uh, that diver in the bubble. So um, let's say this is only 500 volts. This is purified water. I'm going to get that big one to go, haven't I? <laughs> gotcha. Okay guys, uh, thanks for watching. Um, I'd be interested to see how uh, other folks are getting on. Bye-bye. Um,